Hi, everyone. My name is James Henderson. I'm from SN Systems, who we make the, or help make the development tools for the PlayStation console. I'm going to be speaking on error handling in libraries today, and why is it important? What are some bad approaches and why they are bad? What are some good alternative approaches? And to illustrate this, I'm going to be using some work I did about six months ago to the Dwarf Debug Line Parser. Now, don't worry, you don't need to know anything about Dwarf to really get the principles I'm talking about here. They're all generic to library development. Um, so let's outline the problem here. So here is the Dwarf Line Table class. It is part of the Dwarf Debug Info Library, and it's got multiple users. For example, Dwarf Dump, DSimutil, and LLD. Each of these users have different requirements. For example, they might want to treat warnings as errors, or they might want to print warnings and errors in a different format. Let's look at one of a, a, a concrete example from this. So each of the code samples you'll see here are taken from either before or after the changes I made about six months ago. In this specific case, we're looking at a warning message printed using fprintf to stutter directly. After we print the warning, we then return false. However, there are some problems with this. Firstly, fprintf stutter is not the same as pr printing to the ur stream. Um, you actually end up with in stream interleaving and potentially inconsistent coloring depending on how the rest of the program is written. But this can be fixed easily enough by using the with color warning functions and similar. Um, so that's what happened around the time I was doing this work. However, this still doesn't handle the case of what if we want to treat this warning as an error? This is forcing the user to, as an error. So my suggestion is don't print your errors and warnings directly in your libraries. Instead, return information that the user can um, use to produce their warnings and errors that they wish to. For example, in this case, we're using an LLVM error to, to return up to the user. Now, the second case doesn't work quite, quite the same way because not all warnings can, and other diagnostic messages result in, an, in a termination of the function in a return. So in this case, we can't just return an LLVM error. However, what we can do is we can pass this error to, or other information to a, recover, to a callback. So in this particular case, again, we've, t we've passed in a callback from the caller. Um, the executable defines that callback, and it perhaps takes an LLVM error and it does something with it, like throw it away, or turn it into an actual error, print it as a warning, whatever. This is the parse function in the line uh, dwarf line table class. Uh, it, it's got, it takes an offset pointer. It also returns a Boolean. That offset pointer is used to calculate an end offset, and then finally that function returns that end offset after doing some more work. Some of you might notice the uh, issue there. End offset is not of type bool. Now, it actually works because this is an implicit conversion. It is technically valid. However, was it the intent? I don't know. It's hard to tell from reading the code. It wasn't clear. There are other issues with returning bool, which I'll come back to in a minute as well. Um, my personal recommendation is that it's not always clear what, whether bool should be, what, how the bool should be used, and so you should probably use something like LLVM error and expect it and so on. Um, in addition, in particular, don't use implicit conversions unless you actually mean to, and probably it's worth documenting it with a comment or similar. So this is the pass method as provided by the executable. So it, it calls into the library. Um, in this case, we loop over a set of um, the line tables over the data in the, that form the line table, should I say. Um, it updates the offset after each call, um, and it then checks for an error at the end and stops potentially if it, if it fails. Now, there are various issues. For example, that bool we mentioned earlier, we don't actually check it anywhere, at least not in this case here. Um, so using something like the LLVM error is we're able to prevent failing, and we're able to, sorry, we're able to catch the error if it fails to be checked it will end up reducing an LLVM abort, uh, an abort. This bit down the bottom here has a couple of issues, um, both of which are basically requiring the caller to know about the implementation of the callee. And the callee, in turn, has to know that the caller is going to do something as well. Neither of these are great. So I would recommend to, for this to use a bit of extra indirection. For example, in this case, I've added a parser class to the library that knows when you're done, which might mean you've hit an unrecoverable error or you've got to the end of the section. And the, the parse next functions take these callbacks we talked about earlier to, to customize the error handling. 
just want to say thank you for listening. Um, and just invite you, when we write libraries, think about how you're handing it over a bit more. Don't just print them. Thank you. <laughs>